Hey guys, this is uh, Trenchy back again to bring you another video. And this time, uh, I'm doing a video for a friend, and also because it's a fun, cool idea. Uh, this video is top five uh, Stanley Kubrick films, um, which was started by uh, The Flow Chamber, aka Mac. A uh, really nice guy. I consider my friend down here, he's very, uh, chill, chill dude, no, knows his shit about movies, has a very cool channel, has some, some fun shit over there, uh, very worth to check out, he's a good guy, uh, definitely, um, uh, definitely check out his channel, I will link it below, but he did this, uh, he did this top five Kubrick movie list, and he asked, uh, for people to put their list, um, now, Kubrick, uh, getting into, uh, uh, Stanley Kubrick here before I, uh, dive into this list. Um, Stanley Kubrick was a master at his craft. Also, I'm doing dishes while I'm talking about this, but, uh, Stanley Kubrick was a master of his craft. There's no, uh, denying that. There's no trying to debate that... Uh, dude was an amazing director, made a lot of great things. Now, I haven't seen all his movies, but everyone I've seen, he are he knocks that out of the park, for sure. Uh, he babe roofs that shit. Um, now, Kubrick, I know there's the thing about Kubrick, uh, as a person... I'm not going to touch on that, but I'm just saying, um, his, you should not be ashamed, because I've seen videos like this, you should not be ashamed, uh, for liking Stanley Kubrick, uh, he was a master at what he does, and his movies are fucking awesome, so, do not feel bad for, uh, liking his movies because maybe some things he did in his life were not exactly moral uh some things he did for the film but he was just uh he was just a master for detail you know he was a perfectionist but we're gonna get into these films um coming in at number five is lolita now uh Lolita uh, starred as a stage play and Kubrick was the first to bring it to screen. Hell, the whole trailer is about... The whole trailer is just them saying over and over again is how the hell did they make a movie of Lolita? Because it's a very uncomfortable story for sure. Um, I really like this film. I don't watch it a lot because of the... Uh, the source material, but, um, I think it's a very well done story, uh, Kubrick directs it so well, uh, I like that it's in black and white, it really adds a touch to the, to the movie, uh, Shelly Lyons, I think her name is, or, so, uh, Sherry Lyons, who plays Lolita, knocks out of the park, uh, very spunky, very, uh, very fun character, uh, I think James Marson, I might be fucking up these names, who plays, um, Professor Humpert, uh, he's good, you can really, uh, tell how he c conflicted he is, and he's a very, uh, complicated character, it's a very complicated story, and I think Kubrick, um, he didn't hold back, he told the story the way it was supposed to be told, and he hit it out of the park, and to take something as tabooed as this, and to bring it to the, uh, to the screen, um, gives it a lot of respect for me, uh, and to bring it, you know, get it done good, you know, um, and tactfully, but also not hold back is just, uh, you know, it's just 
So it it deserves praise for sure, just for those attributes, because that's an incredibly hard job too. So to pull that off is just, you know, it's fucking great. So that's why Lolita has made its way onto this uh, spot at number five. Number four is The Shining. People might be a little confused why it's so low. I do like the horror genre, but I think there's some other films, uh, films Kubrick did a lot better. But I do like The Shining. Not as much as a lot of other people, but I do really love The Shining. Um, very effective. Those overhead uh, filming shots just of Colorado and the trees and the mountains is just like, damn. Um, the claustrophobicness of this movie, you really feel the characters, um, you really feel like you're in their situation, you feel that claustrophobicness, uh, you feel that sense of dread and loneliness, um, you know, great cast, Jack Nicholson kicks it out of the park, fucking amazing, fucking terrifying, Shelly Duvall is great, you really care for her, you really get behind her, uh, was it, was it Scatman Crothers who plays the, uh, the cook there? Uh, he does a great job, he's one of the, one of the best characters, uh, he plays his role very well. Um, the kid's great, get behind the kid, I mean, everybody comes together to play their parts, uh, very surreal, love the, the ending, it's just a very well done, uh, movie. Uh, there's a reason why they consider it one of the best horror movies of all time, and I can I can get I can see that. It's just very well done from the score to the to the angles of the camera. It really puts you in the zone for this movie. So yeah, number four is the shining. Hope you can hear me over the water. But yeah, um, number three is 2001, A uh, Space Odyssey. Um, this is just a journey, man. This is like an epic. Like, if you want to explain epics, this is one of those. Just from the way it's shot, is just revolutionary. The, the camera angles... Um, the special effects, like the monkey people in the beginning, and the fact you really believe they're in space. Uh, again, the isolation. Kubrick likes to touch upon isolation. Again, you feel that in this film. Um, the actors do a good job. The voice of Hale, I don't know his name, but he was so creepy. That, that scene where he's like, Hale, open the, open the pod ship doors, and he's like, I'm sorry, Dan, or was it Dan? But I'm sorry, Dan, but I cannot do that. Like, just fuck, it's just so creepy. The way, I didn't do it justice, but the way he says it, just the, just politely, but like that coldness behind it is just like, oh, fucking creepy ass machine fuck. Just, it's a really well done, really well shot movie. Um, it's a, it's an experience, uh, just kind of like the Shining's kind of experience in the way, this is an experience as well, um, it's just this epic journey, uh, that we go on, and, um, yeah man, it deserved a spot on the list for sure, it's a fantastic movie, so you get, am I back? Yeah. And number three is 2001 The Space Odyssey. Definitely had to be mentioned. Hail alone. Just fucking hail alone. You know. Just bring this up. This is just a great movie. Uh, number two is A Clockwork Orange. Fuck. <laughs> Clockwork Orange. Again, like I said, these movies are kind of experiences. Clockwork Orange is is crazy it's so intense but so beautiful at the same time i know like disturbing and beautiful 
you you want to put in the same sentence, but in this I I do think it's disturbingly beautiful. Um, Malcolm McDowell is is great. Um, sometimes you feel bad for him, but other times it's like, yeah, you're a piece of fucking shit. You're a piece of fucking shit. And then there's the whole argument of society versus is society to blame for people's actions or are you to blame and how much of each side, you know, trying, you know, who's the real monster here? That's really what is touched upon. But, um, it's a very actually complicated movie, but also, um... In a way, it can be a little simple, but at the same time, it's still pretty complicated. Um, that dancing in the rain scene is just, uh, or singing in the rain scene is just, oh, shit. Um, this movie has a lot of style. Like, Kubrick's films, uh, mostly do. This movie has great style to it. Uh, you know, the fedoras, the, the suits, just... Hey, everything about this movie is just so well done. There's the graffiti's on the walls and shit. Just so visually good as well. With Kubrick, he really knows how to bring the uh, the visuals. And, uh... Yeah, this is just a great movie, man. So, number two is, uh, is A Clockwork Orange. Just a great story. A fucked up vibe for sure. And number one, um, I thought about this, and all these films are brilliant, and even um, one I that didn't make the list, but Full Metal Jacket, that's brilliant as well. All these films are really good. They're top notch films. But uh, we, we have come down to the wire, and uh, the one that I prefer the most out of these, and I think is just a very great film, very surreal film, um, that I saw when I was younger, and I still, uh, I still enjoy. Um, a very poignant film, and I think what still, uh... Still, still holds up today and is maybe more, uh, um, more poignant and more, um, more relevant, relevance, the word I'm working for, looking for, uh, than ever is, uh, Dr. Strangelove, or aka How I Stop Worrying and Learn to Love the Bomb. This movie's just so surreal. Now, I never saw this as a comedy. I know there's a lot of comedic aspects for it, and it is even labeled as a comedy. But I, I never... I've seen it more as a drama. This movie's just so surreal and just so... So crazy, but so... So real at the same time very surreal but also real problems real issues uh george c scott is amazing i forgot the other guy's name but uh the guy that plays you know dr strange love and shit um and the the guy causing the problems um he's great um you got james earl jones in there uh He's good in the small little role he's given. This movie's just crazy from the line. Um, you can't fight in here, gentlemen. This is a war room. And just the, the surrealness and the guy riding the bomb. And just, holy shit. Just the shit this movie deals with. Is just, um, it's just, it, it kind of shows out the kind of like the uh the stupidity and uh kind of um double standards and kind of the irony the irony of war in a way um i would like to say and uh kubrick has a lot to say with this piece and i think um 
it's him at the best of his abilities. Yes, 2001 is very poignant and just, uh, it's an experience and Clockwork Orange had a story to tell, like, all of them are good, but I feel like this one combines elements of those films in a way to to tell this just great story and talk about this problem and uh, you know and just uh, make this very relevant story that I that is still relevant today and um, yeah Doctor Doctor Strange Love um, is is brilliant. It's a brilliant movie. Uh, there are all of these movies on this list are very good, and Full Metal Jacket is as well. But and they all have a message. All of these movies do have a message, but I think Doctor Strange Love has one of the the best messages. Um, there we go. That's my list. Uh, thank you to Mac for. And I'll send this up and shit. I'm um, going to link them down below. Check them out. Um, yeah, that's my top five Kubrick films. What are yours? Um, of course, like I said, I haven't seen all of Kubrick's films. I, I haven't seen Spartacus. I haven't seen Barry Lyndon. A um, couple of his earlier films as well. I haven't seen. Uh, Eyes Wide Shut is, was, was a contender as well. And Full Metal Jacket were a contender for this list. They're both... Great films as well, but they got beat out by the five I showed. I feel like those, these ones are my favorites of the bunch. And, um, feel like they deserve shoutouts and talking upon for me. I haven't seen a lot of these films in a while. Um, I think the last one I watched latest was actually The Shining, which I put pretty low, but still, it's, um... I just, I still love these films, and, um, sorry I couldn't talk about them, uh, like, uh, more in depth because I haven't seen them lately, but I, but I have seen them, I think I feel like I've seen them enough to talk about them a little bit, and they've left impacts for sure. Hi. Oh, I'm shooting oh. a video. Okay. You were wondering what was going on. Okay, I was wondering who was snapping. I wasn't snapping, I was talking. He was snapping. I'm gonna wrap this up here. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys have a good day. Stay frosty. This is Trenchy signing off. Be bye.